So our session today is around inclusivity and open source. And, and you know, I'm going to take a slightly uh, angled view at that in that I'm going to talk about both um, stepping into your own leadership shoes and becoming a leader. Uh, and I want you to also reflect on how you can help others become a leader. As um, you know, in my leadership roles, I always look to cultivate these types of traits in others. I look to cultivate these types of opportunities in others because it is on all of us to cultivate leaders around us. Um, and that's, you know, so that's one lens. And the other lens is if you are earlier in your career or coaching someone earlier in their career, think about these uh, ideas. I have, I'm going to share 10 thoughts with you. Notice these are thoughts. These are not, here's your checklist, do all 10 and life is going to be golden. These are not uh, 10 to do's in a specific order. Although, you know, I do like number 10 the most. So you'll, you'll see that one coming. Um, but I want you to think about those because cultivating leaders means you're eliciting their voice, you're eliciting their participation, you're engaging their passions and whether your own or someone else around you, that creates a welcoming and inclusive group to be a part of, whether that group is within a company or within a larger open source community. Um, it is important that we together uh, cultivate that kind of shared culture, right? All right, so I'm going to dive in with 10 thoughts on putting yourself in the spotlight, which also means, you know, it's both limelight and it can be heat lamp too. So, you know, kind of understand what you sign up for. I like to say that when I was an entrepreneur or when I was a, uh, you know, a mid-level uh, executive in a large multinational or today as a CEO of a multinational uh, nonprofit organization, it doesn't matter. I get to be both the CEO and the janitor all at the same time. And that's actually a privilege and an honor uh, and something that is humbling. And that, um, you know, regardless of role, we are all important and we are all we all have something to do and no, nothing is beneath us uh, and, and everything is to kind of move the mission forward. So let's think about this a little bit. Thought number one. Build your career in line with what you're passionate about, you know. For myself, I wanted to make a difference in the world. And I started to think about, you know, well, who makes big differences in the world at global scale? And I thought, well, governments, NGOs, and large corporations. So now I've sort of tried on a couple of those with uh, large multinational corporations as well as now uh, driving, not necessarily, I don't know if we would qualify Risk 5 International as an NGO, but we are a nonprofit in the uh, community mission. Uh, for the risk five architecture. I am so deeply passionate though about open source and collaboration that levels the playing field that enables the same opportunities for an entrepreneur as it does for that multinational that I am fired up and excited to go to work every day. And you know, maybe some days are harder than others, but it's kind of forging that path forward to make a difference in the world that gets me passionate about what I do. That passion is so easy to translate into a career that, that is meaningful to me and to others. If you're creating that and fostering that culture of inclusivity, are you bringing your passion to the game? Are you bringing, you know, kind of that uh, level of energy to the environment that you're creating uh, to bring all of those voices to bear? So think about does your career match and does your passion match? Are you bringing that to work every day? Thought number two, choose a company that you can believe in. Upon a time was an entrepreneur, not, you know what? This is the end of my career. And I was like 20, you know, and, and being an entrepreneur young, to be, you know, both internalize that CEO and janitor uh, dynamic, but you also started to think about, you know, what do I not know? What can I learn from someone else? And I thought, you know, I, I should go 
join a multinational and really get some corporate discipline, pick up an MBA, uh, and what can I get out of that experience? But I wasn't going to join just any multinational. First of all, I'm a vegetarian and I couldn't see myself working in uh, an industry that was food related because I was pretty convinced I was not going to end up in the vegetarian part of that kind of company. So work for what you believe in. For me, that's technology. And for me, that is technology is an ultimate level or game changer around the world and has been for many generations of, um, of progress throughout the world. It's also something that unites us, you know, whether it was the, you know, bringing electricity to bear, railroads, or, you know, the internet, so many game changers that have happened in technology. So I wanted to be in a tech company, but one that I could believe in. And so I really kind of looked at what are the multinationals that I can believe in? And I ended up at IBM because I, the, the values truly resonated with me. And their corporate responsibility wasn't just a report at the end of the year. They lived those ideals. And I can tell you they lived those ideals because my first day at IBM, I was seven months pregnant and going to need to ask for maternity leave about, you know, a minute after I got there. Uh, and so and they treated me with utmost respect, supported me in that journey, and I continued to have a great career with them. Now, I thought it'll take me a couple of years to pick up some some great uh, insight and build my career uh, a little bit further. I was there for about 12 and a half years and still absolutely adore and love IBM for what they stand for. I encourage you to create that environment, create that culture, whether in your company or your community, that it is a culture of colleagues. This isn't about who's got a higher you know, post on the, on the org chart. This is all about treating one another with mutual respect and, and mutual uh, camaraderie, that we are all here to solve a, a problem and that we all bring a very unique perspective to how we might in, in approach that. So think about that. What are the values? What is the culture? Be a part of that company or that community that you can truly believe in. Thought number three. I know these thoughts are feeling kind of heavy because I give you a little bit additional uh, information about it, but seek a role. If you're looking for leadership, seek a role with high visibility. It does, you know, once you've figured out which company or three or four companies you want to be a part of, it does matter a little bit where you enter that company at because you want to accelerate your career, accelerate your influence. Think about what role could I have at these three or four companies that you truly resonate with that could give me uh, profound visibility in front of executives and other decision makers. Then seek to be part of the growth end of the business. Look at kind of where the business is at and make sure that you're not joining part that is uh, is in decline or is at sort of the end of their lifespan. You, know, you kind of risk you know continued uh, strain on resources and possible uh, attrition of your colleagues in that area. If you're a leader and seeking to create inclusivity, start to pay attention to those junior level colleagues that are doing their best, that are bringing their best to work every day, that are the top performers, and think about what can you do to help lift them up? What can you do to increase visibility of top performers with other executives? Don't worry if they leapfrog you in, in a career. That's a great thing. Help to be the person who spots the top performers, who spots like leader, future leaders, and help elevate them. Pay attention to them. Go the extra mile. So this is all about kind of overachieving. It's about um, kind of looking for those opportunities to really shine and match that up with something that you're naturally as a natural strength of yours, or is something that you're really you know, that's going to feel comfortable. That's going to feel like a goal that you want to have in your career. So look for those stretch assignments. Look for things that are above and beyond. You know, one manager told me when I was uh, way, way long ago, another lifetime ago, I started off in the magazine publishing industry, and I asked her very candidly. She was a very strong manager. Um, she had come from South Africa, and she was just really, uh, I have a lot of respect for her. And I was like, wow, you know, she really commands some attention. And I thought, you know, what is it that I can do? And, she, and I, you know, I, I asked her, what can I do to become a manager? I was a first line employee. And she said, well, act like you already have the job. 
<laughs> so that didn't mean go start bossing other people around and then take on that level of perspective. Think about take on those extra challenging assignments, help to coalesce teams around particular ideals. It can mean take on those uh, leadership roles that you might invent for yourself or you might just spot as something that needs to be done and take a role in, in solving that. Which brings me to thought number five, solve problems that matter. People are probably going to care a little bit less if you've figured out the trick to finally getting the coffee maker to work in the break room, but they're going to care a lot if you figured out a different way to be efficient in getting a team uh, to, to meet some goals. So think holistically about problems. Think as if you owned the business or the business unit or the mission, or maybe you have, maybe you've already stepped into that role as a work group leader or something else in the open source community, but think holistically about the moving parts and the various stakeholders that influence uh, kind of the solutions to those problems and make those proposals. Or if you have the authority already, start to implement those proposals, start to solve problems and make them problems that matter. Um, Think about things that could make your team better, more efficient. You know, ideally think about how you could automate yourself out of a job so you can go do the next thing and, and you will get credit for that, right? I mean, nobody wants to, everybody wants to get rid of the mundane in order to progress with the things that uh, inspire deeper uh, thinking, deeper leadership, deeper um, engagement, right? So look at problems, not just in the quick fix, but think holistically. If this was your company, if this was your community, if this was your team, what could make it truly better for the long term? And sometimes that's hard. You know, at IBM, I got to look at a lot of really cool technologies, but I could never actually go do anything with them unless I also brought the business case. Cool technology is great. That's like a science fair. But if you can also bring in the business side of things and think holistically about how would the company pursue something like this, is there a revenue opportunity? Is there a development advantage? Is there a, um, you know, a partner that we could work with together on this? How would we actually go to market? Where would we develop it? Do we save any costs? Is there risk associated with it? Think holistically. And, and then bring that case forward and, and get uh, some time together with decision makers to move it forward. Thought number six, build genuine relationships. Wow, the world has changed and is so profoundly built on instant connections and numbers of followers or numbers of LinkedIn friends or whatever they're called. Build genuine relationships. Cultivate things in real life. Don't cultivate things simply online. I, mean, I understand it's been a little bit of a tricky year, but cultivate genuine relationships. Look for opportunities to work together. If there's somebody that you really want to get to know and build a relationship with, what can you do for them? Contribute to their success in some way. Hey, I found this article on exactly what you're talking about in your speech that you gave at this particular summit or whatever that I thought you might find really interesting. Open the conversation by giving something first. It's, it's like pay it forward, right? So pay it forward at work. Pay it forward to uh, the culture of your organization, to the community that you're cultivating. What can you do to pay it forward? So you know, lend some advice, lend some, you know, data, lend some, you know, insight. Think in open source worlds about how transparency matters, how sharing and contributing and giving back matters. And that's paramount to building relationships that are durable throughout your career. And just a this helpful side note, your network is your next job. Looking for a job on a job board or, you know, LinkedIn or wherever, um, you know, that's your like one in a million chance. Building a network, a deep, meaningful network, that's what cultivates your next new job, your next career step. And if you're building your leadership expertise, that's, that's a really powerful thing. And in the job that you're in, 
you will have that network that you can reach out to, bounce ideas off of. And that's really important. Stay in touch with your network. Try not to let things go uh, too many years without a, a hello, how's it going, thinking of you, uh, things like that. It is, it is important. Role models. You know, there's lots of ways that you could think about role models. You know, there's the celebrities you see on TV. There's the, you know, the, the, the person at your, uh, you know, at the deli around the corner that always seems to be smiling and happy. And, you know, you start to glean pieces of everyone around you on who is it that you want to be. Think about emulating those leadership traits that you see in others. And I will tell you right now, some of my favorite leaders that I emulate in the world talk a lot with their hands. <laughs> and I started to find myself doing that too. And you may notice that about me, but you know, it can be many things. It can be how they speak. They speak in the terms called we rather than I or you. It's all about we. It can be in their public speaking presence in how they carry themselves in conversations. It can be in their profound ability to listen and reflect back and derive uh, broad connections between disparate things. It can be many different things. And as I've already hinted at, it's not just those above you, but it's those at every level of the organization. Role models, mentors, they're not always you know, the most obvious. You can have mentors that help you, you know, kind of navigate you know, kind of social dynamics, you know, hey, I'm having a hard time in a particular community because I feel like my voice is not being heard. You can have mentors in other contexts that help you to understand how do I get my next job? How do I become, or how, how can I become better in the job that I have? Or what is the next job I should have in the first place? You know, here's kind of what I like to do. Do you have any ideas for me? So yeah, mentors are important but also you are driving your own destiny and think about how role models can really help to influence you there. Thought number eight, build authority. This is sort of that uh, pretend you have the job before you have it kind of thing. You wanna be a manager, start acting like one. Hey team, let me organize us around these like various deliverables that we have that we have no idea otherwise how we're gonna get done. Like, hey, let's divide and conquer in a particular way. Lead anything. It doesn't matter. Lead, you know, lead the summer picnic for your neighborhood work groups. Try on that leadership in, you know, in, in those types of forums. I'm, you know, I'm a Girl Scout camp mom. I'm like helping all kinds of young girls to figure out their leadership voice. And the older they get, the more I put the leadership and the responsibility onto them. So if you are also in charge of cultivating leaders in your community or in your organization, Hand out leadership jobs, hand out leadership authority, hand out authority to make decisions. It doesn't have to be leading people. These can be independent contributors who need the authority to move forward on decisions that they have the capacity to make because they are closest to the issue. Think about where can you give out authority? Think about where can you take authority to help continue to cultivate leadership and share collegial, uh, you know, interest and uh, stakeholders in the organization. And part of that, don't just take the problem and pass it to someone else because it's not my job. It's all of our jobs. We're all janitors. There's no, it's my job. Stay connected to problems until they're solved. If you have to go engage somebody who actually can solve the problem, I get it, but just stay connected. People remember that remember that and understand that you are there to really truly help them move forward. Thought number nine, be heard. Be have to listen first, reflect back, stay positive, be upbeat, be the person other people want to be around, right? Um, coming out with lots of challenges or criticisms or other negativity that's that's people get allergic to that really fast and they start to back away be the person who surfaces a challenge stays positive and thinks through how can we open the challenge so look for ways to ask questions and collaborate on on solutions 
be direct and think about what is the voice that we need to hear right now and if you're not hearing it lift that voice yourself and i say be direct because well i guess because i'm direct so it's easy to tell and, and suggest that being direct is a positive thing um be direct without sharp edges leave the sharp edges for i don't know private time with yourself but don't bring those to any other forum be direct and if your voice is being shut down and for me it's mostly that you know i've occasionally run into the time when i get uh I think the term is called mansplaining, where someone else, it's often a man, decides, oh, what Callista's trying to say is, and boy, there's nothing more frustrating for me. I don't, you know, shut that down immediately. If someone ever says, what, you know, Callista's trying to say is, my reaction is, thank you, I don't need you to speak for me. Let me, let me clarify if there's a question. And interrupt them and step on their time because they have just diminished your authority or your leadership potential. And, and you know, honestly, it's generally not an ill intention. Um, but if your voice is constantly being shut down, address it. Address it clearly, obviously, publicly, and, you know, take that person to task. And then privately go fix it. Go figure out with whoever's, you know, in charge of that forum, figure out how to go fix it so that that space is opened back up again, not only for your voice, but for everyone's voice. And if you're in that forum leadership role, think about how you open space for the voices of others to be heard. It can be incredibly difficult. I understand there are folks that will take the entire meeting time and do nothing but you know, keep their mouth open talking about their particular agenda. And it can be so frustrating because you've got something to say, but you're far too polite then to interrupt them. Open the space for others. Quiet down the voices that are overwhelming and actually invite the voices you're not hearing. Hey, so-and-so, I haven't heard, you know, you share your point of view. I'd really like to hear it. And then wait, give them a minute. Hey, maybe they need to come off mute. Or maybe they need to collect their thoughts or text them on the side and say, hey, I really want you to, I really want to call on you. Do you can you stand up and, and say your view if it's a sensitive situation? But always make space for others. Whether you're the leader or a colleague, it doesn't matter. We're all cultivating this culture together. My last thought, and I told you this was going to be my favorite. Be humble and be the leader and the role model that you want to be for others. That doesn't matter where you stand in the hierarchy today or what your role is in the community or the forum that you're driving or the company, be humble about it. Speak in terms of we, speak in terms of you know how shared success, privately address one-on-one -on -one issues, unless it is highly offensive. <laughs> Like, like getting mansplained. I, I, I consider that like just something is no longer acceptable. And then look for opportunities to lift others up. Give credit, give lots of public verbal credit whenever possible to the great things that are going on in your community. And that's something that we can all do. You know, let's give credit. Let's, um, you know, let's promote and lift up others uh, through both visibility, through job opportunities, through you know, trying to help cultivate career paths, take time to be a mentor to others, take time to be a role model, take time to give uh, you know, positive feedback. And positive feedback could be, you know what? I think that you could really shine with this particular you know, talk that you gave if you did a little bit of a tweak. That's a positive feedback. Like, wow, you have amazing content. I think this could really, really be helpful to you. And then listen to that, listen to the feedback, internalize it and decide where it fits in, you know, the, the version of you that you're putting out there. So those are my 10 thoughts. I appreciate the time to get to spend with you. Hey, go out there and be a boss. Like that's where we are today, folks. And uh, yeah, that's, that's all I have to share with you. I'm happy to take any questions. I have no idea how this is running on time though. You're doing fine. You were at seven o'clock, but 
I'm not at planning to say a lot, so we have time for questions. So if anyone would like to type your question in the chat or turn your mic on and speak. I can't see any questions. That was a fabulous talk, Callista. And I was just thinking back over my career. <laughs> Have we got a question? You, you have a question for me, um, uh, uh, Cornelia. Um, uh, I've only got microphone, not camera at the moment. Um, uh, so, Callista, I've, I've heard you speak so many times about Risk Five. I've never heard. Oh yeah, I didn't mention that this time. <laughs> yeah, and, and it's absolutely inspirational. It's absolutely really good. I love those ten points. Um, I'm very conscious that I run a small company, um, and I've got. Actually, last year I had three, uh, our entire graduate intake was female. I've got three young graduates who have just joined me. And what one point would you say to me as a, you know, a male engineer towards the end of his career? What could I most do to maximize the chance of those three having the best chances through their career? Well, first of all, Jeremy, please don't tell me you're at the end of your career. That, I'm not accepting that. But second, <laughs> make introductions for them, get open opportunities for them, give them voice. And that voice can be, you know, submitting, you know, encouraging them. They may not even know, hey, you should submit a talk for this or introduce them to other uh, important people within your network. Hey, I'd like you guys to, to get to know one another and, and uh, you know, maybe offer a starting point for them to build those deep relationships. Um, engage them in teams where you feel there is a positive culture to be emulated. Uh, thank you. Okay, that, 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 that's all good advice. I mean, I've got three very, well, you know one of them, Mary Bennett, because um, um, you've worked with her. Um, so I've got three great students uh, who've graduated and are now part of the company. So that's good advice to them. Um, and you may get more introductions from me. Um, thank you. Uh, okay, I'll drop off. I see there's a question from Maud. Well, we have a we have a comment in the chat saying, uh, "I like the statement. You don't have to lead people, but lead anything." That's a good way to build up confidence. I'm mid-career, fairly confident, but felt like I never really made my mark. So glad to, uh, so glad I turned into tonight and feel encouraged. So, Maude, thank you so much for your comment. I absolutely. Maud, thank you so much for your comment. I uh, fully agree. Uh, you know, leading people as the only progress in a career is just a terrible idea. Not, not everybody is good at managing people. And, you know, some are much better at leading technologies or leading initiatives as an independent contributor. And that can mean, you know, getting yourself published in ways, writing a blog or uh, just getting some visibility for the really cool work that you're doing. Um, you know, submitting a talk if you're comfortable on stage. Not everyone's comfortable on stage. Some people are great at leading people, but really don't want to get on stage. So, you know, finding your version of leadership is, you know, is a, there, there are a lot of flavors to that. Rob, Rob is going to be right there with you as a technology leader rather than a people one. I wonder how do you think uh, we could get more women involved in open source organizations? I think we need to invite them because I think that in in our world we don't I mean just as as humans, right? It doesn't matter what kind of human you are or how you identify, but as humans we often get sort of in our worlds and we don't see these other opportunities, right? And, and if, 
we as leaders or we as colleagues reach out to our colleagues specifically and say, you know what, there's a great opportunity here that might be really fun for you. Um, and, you know, approach it as humans, right? It's, it's, we could all use that little invitation to join. And being invited to join something helps to create that welcoming and inclusive culture as well. And I will say, if you're driving an open source community or a community type of thing of any flavor, make sure you put some women in your speaker lineup. You know, it's, it's difficult when you show up to a conference and you're like one of the only women there. And that's happened to me. You know, one of the only women that's, you know, getting up on stage. And I'm okay with that. I'm happy to at least be one, <laughs> you know, um, but look for ways to get more visibility of women or minorities or people that, you know, don't look like you, things like that. We need that variety. We need that, that diversity of voice um, in those forums and by uh, giving visibility at events or in speaker lineups or in blogs or in other types of things, you know, leading a work group or, um, you know, being a, you know, one of the strongest contributors to an open source, uh, uh, you know, pull requests, things like that, really important. Thank you. Uh, are there further questions? I mean, uh, Maud has come back with another comment. The work land landscape is changing and attending talks like this is a good introduction for more women to join open source. Yeah, and I, I, to be honest, I, I haven't been part of very many like women and technology specific groups. I, I probably should participate there more. I just, you know, have always been in the deep end of the pool. Well, 